Hello and welcome to the Science Fairy. In this video I will show how I made my improved cathode ray tube and I will explain how a cathode ray tube works. In the past cathode ray tubes were used for TVs and monitors but today they are replaced by LCD screens and other technologies. In the last video I already made a prototype of a cathode ray tube out of glass tubes and aluminum tubing. And in this video I improved this design to have a nice point and a screen. So first how does a cathode ray tube actually work? To get a picture on the screen or any light on the screen we need to do two things. We need to create electrons and we have to accelerate these electrons to the screen. The screen is coated with a so-called phosphor and this phosphor will start emitting light if it's hit by an electron. To create the electrons in the cathode ray tube a filament similar to these old filament light bulbs is used. When the filament is heating up there is a cloud of electrons forming around the filament and this is called thermionic emission. Then we still need to accelerate the electrons to the screen and for that we are using two electrodes and by putting a voltage between these electrodes the electrons get accelerated to the anode. Then the electrons are flying through a hole in the anode onto the screen and the screen is emitting the light that we see on the other side. In reality there are some other electrodes to focus the beam and stuff like that but for this simple setup we don't need that. What else we need is a vacuum in the tube because if we have any gas in the tube the electrons hit the gas and can fly on the screen or get accelerated to pass through this gas. Alright now to the construction. So last video I made this by putting aluminum tubes and glass tubes together and this worked very well but I didn't have a screen I just had some phosphor at the end to see if it's even working. What I also don't have is this filament that I mentioned at the beginning and in this setup I don't need it because I think it's because there's still enough gas in the tube because I only have a vacuum pump that goes to a certain level that this gas is conductive enough that the electrons can come from the high voltage of the accelerating electrodes. Alright but I wanted to have a screen at the end and for that I used a test tube with a flat bottom and I coated the test tube, the bottom of the test tube with the phosphor. After that I cut off the end of my existing cathode ray tube and I used a piece of aluminum with a hole in the middle and put it on the anode of the tube. This will give me a sharp dot on my screen and not just an electron mess. I had to melt down the test tube a bit so it was matching with the diameter of my small cathode ray tube. And after that I glued the test tube to the rest of the glass construction. This worked actually super well and it formed a nice dot on my screen. But unfortunately these are the only photos I have because the glass broke and I lost vacuum. After that I started building a version that I can repair or modify if needed. For that I used some uncoated PCBs and I drilled all the necessary holes into them. Then I glued in a piece of glass tubing for the vacuum and electrical pass-throughs. All this is done with epoxy and on the other plate I glued the test tube. To make this airtight I thought I can make a groove and fill this with hot glue but this didn't work at all. What I did instead is putting a rubber band between two aluminum plates, heating it up and pressing it together. 
before I could test it though my test tube broke and I had to replace it with a new one and I used a test tube with a round bottom. This is probably stronger but it doesn't make such a great screen. And instead of coating the end of the test tube with phosphor I used an x-ray intensifying screen and this reacts to electrons as well and I cut out a piece to put in the test tube. So first I thought I can solder a PCB with a hole in it on one electrode on the anode and put it over the cathode but this didn't work at all. After that I put a piece of glass tubing over the cathode for isolation and then I put a piece of aluminum foil over the glass tube again with a hole poked in it and then the other metal contact the anode is going to the aluminum foil and this actually worked super well you can see in the video that I can deflect the electron beam with a magnet because you can deflect electrons with a magnetic field after that I tried it again with the fluorescent material from the beginning and you can see there is some light shining through from the gas discharge but I can deflect some of it and that's the electron beam. Alright that's it for now maybe I'll make some more vacuum projects in the future and if you liked my videos then leave a like or subscribe to my channel. Until next time bye!